Welcome to episode 61 of Tools in the Hall. Brand new products to show you tonight. If you have seen my most recent live stream, I covered these on there. But if you're just a fan of the videos, then you probably haven't seen that we're now producing in-house two brand new products. One is man cleaner, mechanic scrubbing soap, and the other is parts cleaner, or smooth bath and body soap. This has a lot of pumice in it, so you would use this to exfoliate your skin, dig deep to get all the grease and grime that builds up in the rough parts of your hands and your elbows. Do not use this on your private parts because you'll be in for quite a shock. Instead, <laughs> use this. This is the smooth bar that you can use all over. I was kind of surprised that after the last video I did on how I make these, then a bunch of people have asked me to purchase them online. And if you're interested, they're $5 per bar, or if you buy five, you get one free. Just sh uh, send me an email at sales at coiltools.com with how many you'd like of each, and I'll send them right out to you. Man cleaner, parts cleaner. Pumice smooth. Yes everywhere, no, not everywhere. <laughs> The man cleaner shipping in a brown box and the parts cleaner in sending in a white box. I'm not labeling the boxes because labels cost money and I'm trying to keep the cost down on these. There's no scent because fragrance oils are expensive. So in order to keep the cost down, unscented in plain boxes. And they've been selling very well on the truck and I was very happy that a bunch of people asked to buy them from me uh, by mail order once that video went up a couple of weeks ago. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. You'll see the whole soap making process that I use. And if you'd like some, just shoot me that email. Okay, what's next? Oh, you, you probably saw this a couple of weeks ago in its beat up form. That's a folding aluminum work platform. If you don't already own one, I'm sure you have seen them in shops. They're used to get extra height to reach into an engine compartment, say in a pickup truck or some taller vehicles. And that one, as you can see, it's been shrink wrapped and it came in very nicely packaged. That is replacing one that came from a different vendor, which was really beat up and was not shrink wrapped. And I'm, I'm thinking that the first vendor repackaged a return because when we got to it, there was old packing tape on the box and the box was torn to bits and you could see some marks on, on the unit itself. So I'm guessing that because these are the exact same platform and I know they come out of the same factory in China, that one was probably a, a resend of a, of a return. So we, we changed vendors, we got this one, it's in perfect shape, so that goes out to my customer. Uh, well, I, I, I always say that but these videos always go out a couple of weeks after I actually deliver this stuff. So my customer will have had this for a couple of weeks already. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. For all you kids out there that don't know what a record is, it's a vinyl disc about that big around that plays music on a, on a turntable. But you may not know what that is. <laughs> anyway, what happened in a broken record, they'd skip. And, we, and, and you'd hear the same thing over and over again. And that's what I feel like. It's an old expression. Anyone who's over 50 knows what it means. I sound like my MP3 is split. No, it doesn't even... I sound like my MP3 is on loop playback. That's not it. That's not a thing. That'll never catch on. This is a 114-piece tap and die synth from Gear Wrench. I've done a complete tutorial video on this one. You can check that out if you haven't seen that. But it's, it's an older video now. But man, this thing is so popular because it's such an extensive set. It has all the jumbo sizes that go up to three quarters of an inch on the standard size. 19 millimeter on the metric size side and it's got these wonderful ratcheting tap wrenches that allow you to palm the tap or die really comfortably and you're not doing this hand over hand thing with the older style tap wrench we have to turn the the sides of the tap wrench to close the the bit holder in there and those are sloppy because there's a lot of play in that design. These don't have that because these have a pass-through design where you insert the tap 
collet or the die holder into the wrench. And the wrench is ratcheting with a little directional selector switch. Somebody asked me in a previous video if there was simply a forward and back on that selector switch or if center is neutral or, or locked a ratchet. It is just a two-way either forward or back. So unfortunately, after I thought about that question, I realized it would be a really good feature if Gear Wrench were to build in a center position that locks it so you can, you know, kind of work it back and forth, but they don't. So you'd have to, you know, work it one way, flip the switch and work it the other, which I can see that being kind of a pain in the neck. It would be great if anyone from Gear Wrench is listening. <laughs> I know they're not. If they can build, if they can make in their next iteration of these wrenches a center position, lock that ration in place so you can, you can, you can work it back and forth. But anyway. This, these guys are on sale through the end of September for $399.99. It's the best price I've ever seen on this set. Usually, they're still fairly inexpensive when you compare them to the Irwin sets when these are not on sale for about $460 to $480. It beats the Irwin set by a lot because Irwin's selling for well over $550. I think they're up to $570 now on their, on their sets that come with the drill bits and they have all the regular sizes of the taps and dies. They don't have jumbo sizes. So this set here, I give the edge to because not only is the price so much better, but it's such a more extensive set. You get far more use out of this than you would out of the Irwin one. So, I mean, I sell the Irwin one if someone wants it, but I don't keep it in inventory just simply because th there's, not, there's no value there. The value is in this set. Astro has this digital tire inflator. This is the same one that is sold under the Blue Point name. And they have some third party manufacture these. Astro has it manufactured for them. Astro is a private label company, which means all their stuff is made by somebody else to their specification, or they buy from another company what that company offers and just have it labeled for them. So the Astro one is the same as the Blue Point one. The beautiful part of this setup is it has a stainless braided hose on it and a really easy to read display. And these take AAA batteries, which I really like because they're easier to replace than those button batteries that you see on some of the other models. They have the blue, and now they come in green as well. One of my customers owns a brake and alignment shop, and that's all they do. They don't buy a ton of stuff, but when they do buy, they buy a lot at one time. And I really like these guys because not only do I, we just all get along so great and it's fun, to talk with them every week. But when they know what they want, they're highly specific. And I really enjoy uh, helping a customer who knows exactly what he wants, gets it. Because, you know, some people ask for recommendations. Some people don't exactly know, especially newer guys who may have an understanding of something that they need but don't know exactly. But these guys always know exactly what they want. And they asked me for a brake bleeder set of wrenches and when I was looking around I saw just the coolest set from Vim. Same size on both ends but you can see a different angle on either end. This set covers 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 millimeter. And I'm such a big fan of Vim anyway because their stuff is such high quality. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Vim, like Astro, is also a private label brand. I don't think they own any of their own manufacturing, but their stuff is such great quality and they have really nice original designs. So what Vim does is they'll have engineers on staff that will design the tool and then they go to a manufacturer to make it for them. Um, so they're an original equipment manufacturer. Uh, they're, they're original design manufacturer, ODM, as opposed to OEM. And their stuff is such great quality. I'm a big fan of all their stuff. And I've been getting more and more of the stuff on the trucks lately too because their pricing is rather good. Their selection is excellent. And although they don't sell a wide variety of stuff, they have a really good selection of specialty tools. They have great stubby or like half length bit sockets and Torx drivers and stuff like that. So anytime I have a call for a specialty tool, I look at Vim first to see if they've got it covered because their stuff is so great. And this set of wrenches is 96 bucks. You know, on a tool truck, you know, that's, that's a particularly good price for such a high quality set of wrenches. 
So I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm going to be delivering these to, uh, to those guys. And I got a couple of other things for them too that I'll show you. I'll, I'll also, uh, <laughs> well, I'll show you a video clip too of something that's really cool. Hold that thought. I'm going to show you some other things first. I have a new shop that I took on and in so doing, I have a few new customers now. One of them is getting this 10 piece set of 3 8 drive metric universal sockets from Sunex. And when he asked me what, what brands I carried, I told him Sonex, Green Pneumatic, uh, Gear Wrench, and uh, you know, there's some other brands I wouldn't normally recommend, but those three brands there are ones that I feel very good about people buying. And when I was looking around at pricing and selection and availability, the Sonex ones came up uh, top of the list, $174.99. And you know, like the Vim wrenches, find a similar price like that on a tool truck for 3 8 drive, impact grade, deep swivel sockets. And I don't know that you can, unless you're buying Sonics on another truck, but certainly snap on Mako and, and Mac can't touch that price. And the quality is about the same. I've been selling Sonics for years. I know tons of people who use their stuff. In fact, many of you use Sonics and people comment with regularity on the videos about how they've owned Sonics and they really like them. Every now and then somebody will pipe in and say that they don't like Sonics and I'll ask them why and I don't get much of a response. But for the folks who do like them, they've been very, very reliable. I'm a big fan of the brand because the pricing and quality is so good. Warranties are a, sna or, or, or a snap with these guys. If you have broken stuff, go through your dealer or if you don't have a dealer, just go on their website, fill out a form on their Sun Express program, take a picture of your broken tool, send the form in and they'll send you a new one. So they make it very easy regardless of whether or not you have a dealer. More stuff from Vim. This is a two piece upholstery and clip tool set. One's a short reach and one's a long reach. You can buy them individually or as a two piece set. Nice comfort grip handle with a hanging loop with a hanging hole on it for a, or a, uh, for a lanyard or a hanging loop. And they have the U shaped ends to them. I don't know, for some reason, this is one of these tools that took me forever to put on the truck. And when I do, wouldn't you know, they sell all the time. So. <laughs> That's restocking an inventory item for me that uh, has been selling regularly. It's not a tool, but no tool truck should be without beef jerky. This is a shipment of jalapeno and sweet and hot. I'm a big fan of Jack Lynx because they have a good size bag, high quality product, and the price is very reasonable. Good beef jerky is expensive anyway, but... Uh, for just a dollar more than what you'll find in a convenience store, I can sell you a bag of this on the truck. And love the quality. The, the pieces are, are juicy and soft. And when we were looking for a new beef jerky vendor, when we were getting away from the old vendor we had, boy, did we test a lot of beef jerky. And I cannot believe how terrible a lot of the beef jerky is on the market dry, crumbly, just hard to eat. It tastes terrible. So we finally sat on Jack Lynx and I, was, and I figured they were a big name brand so they'd be expensive, but we buy them in dealer packs and it keeps the cost down. So good on you, Jack Lynx. You've been a, a, a favorite for a long, long time now. We, we've been selling it for years. Never had a bad bag, never had a batch go bad and they have a good shelf life on them. So we're very happy with Jack Lynx as our, as our beef jerky product. Guys have recommended other brands to me and I am very appreciative that people would do that, but I, but I can't buy as big a bag for as low a price. These are three and one quarter ounce bags. Most bags that I've seen are 2.85 ounces and they cost more. So I have no reason to change brands because not only do we get the orders fulfilled right away, but the product quality is so high, and the price is so good, I don't have a reason to ever change brands unless someone else comes along, which can get me a better product, lower cost, I don't know, fulfill orders faster, which I don't know. It would be, it would be tough to do because Jack Links is so good at it. So the fellow who owns that break and alignment shop said to me, hey, remember a few years ago when you sold me that work light and I believed at the time I knew exactly the one he was talking about 
because he fell in love with this light from Schumacher years ago. It has a magnetic swivel base on it, so you can swivel the thing 360 degrees. A very bright array of LEDs. It has an end light in the top. Has hanging hooks on the back, and it's rechargeable. 600 lumens. Nice and bright. Solid light. He says to me, our other light still works, but it's broken. Take a look at the video clip. And he said, I'm pretty sure that's not covered under warranty. And I said, no, you're right, it's not. I was just blown away that it still worked. So he wants to replace it with the same light because he loves the thing so much. So he's getting the one in red now. It's that time in the tool hall that I got to brag about somebody. And this week, it's Autel. This unit here replaces a unit whose battery swelled up, cracked the casing, these end pieces fell off, and the thing was a small disaster. I called Autel, and they said, just send it in. I said, okay. I was expecting there to be a replacement cost. Nope. Autel refurbished the unit by replacing the case. The gut still worked, believe it or not. They replaced the case, replaced the battery, put a new back panel on it to retain the old serial number, and my customer is getting this back for nothing more than covering the cost of shipping on it, and that costs 32 bucks, 35 bucks. So, not bad at all, Autel. <laughs> Thank you. This is one reason why I brag about Autel when customers are asking me about scanners, and I, I always want to make sure I emphasize the value of service after the sale. Now there's a bit of a history with Autel, and that is their after-sale support used to be the worst you could possibly get. They, when you called, no one answered the phone. You had to leave a voicemail in the general mailbox. They never got back to you. So if you had a question, they couldn't answer it. If you had a problem, they had a hard time servicing it. It was a disaster working with that company. So I never sold an Autel scanner because of that. And I would warn people, by the way, if you need a scanner, let's look at somebody besides Autel, maybe Launch, maybe Bosch, maybe some other brand. And then, I want to say about six years ago, I was at a tool show, and Autel was there, and I had to ask a question of, of an inside rep because I had a customer who wanted some information. So I started talking to this rep, and he started selling me on this stuff. I said, let me stop you right there. I said, I have no intention of buying any of your products, and I told him why. And he said, you're right about that. He says, we are aware of how bad that problem is, and we are in the process of fixing it. We're hiring staff. We're getting them trained up. I've heard this before. I used to be an IT director for 20 years. I, I, I know a line when I'm being handed one about, about vendors stepping up their support. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Autel actually did it. And as time went by, I had, a, I had a few reasons here and there to contact them, ask them questions, some pre-sales questions, they answered them. Some post-sale support, they took care of it. And when I called, someone answered. And they proved to me to be people of their word. They said they were going to make a change, they changed it. They said they were going to get better, they did. And their pricing is rather good, very competitive, and their products are, are very comprehensive. Depending on the model that you buy dictates all the things that it will do for you, and their subscription costs are pretty reasonable. This is the 906BT, which is their, sorry, the 906TS, which is their base unit scanner with an additional TPMS module in it. So this can do relearns on TPS sensors as you walk around the car with the scanner. You don't need a separate module to do that. Great unit. And it's not that expensive. I think this is like a, I don't know how much the customer paid for it. They didn't buy it for me. But I was able to help them out with it, which I thought was 
great. I love it when customers come to me and ask them for help on stuff, especially if it's a shop like this one is because when they, when they do that, then I get known as someone who can be a go-to guy and it helps me win over, over additional business, especially if the shop has to make purchases, then a lot of times I'll be a vendor that they will either inquire with or, or give some business to. And this particular shop has been giving me more and more business as time goes on. So very grateful to Juke Automotive in Austin. They've been, they've been a lot of fun to work with. I'm, I, I love the guys there. They've got a solid crew. I don't think they've had much turnover there at all in the last few years. The crew that's there now working on the shop has been there for, uh, I want to say, three years at least. And I don't know anyone who's left. And they're all great guys. I'm doing some good business there. They, they love working there. The shop takes care of them. They like the management there. The management loves them. It's a really one of these rare instances where everything seems to be working well and humming along. So they're doing all the right things there at Juke Automotive. Good on you guys. You'll get this back uh, by the time this video airs. You've seen this a bunch on tool holes before. This is the Sunex 38 piece ratchet and bit set. It comes in a red anodized aluminum case that you can't see because it's in the box with a plastic clear shield on it and it's full of tamper-proof Torx, Torx, Allen, Phillips, slotted screwdriver bits and a quarter drive ratchet with a magnetic bit holder in it and an extension. You can see the extension slid out of the slot there. Terrific little kit. I sell a ton of these things because they're so handy. Throw it in your car if you're not using it in a shop or it's great for under dash work. A lot of guys just, just keep this in their cart to, to make sure it's no further away than arm's reach because they get so much use out of this. It's a great little kit. Lyle has a spill-free funnel that just about everybody who owns a spill-free funnel owns. This is the 18-piece one with a whole bunch of adapters in it. You can see through the translucent funnel that has adapters, has a plug. You can see what the level is because it's translucent. Lucent has a lid on it so you don't get gunk in there. And you can store everything handily in it when you're done. A friend, really good guy and a great customer named Joe Guerrero who watches the channel regularly. Joe, I hope you're watching. Hello. Asked me if I could sell this awesome half inch air impact for him. I'm sure someone will buy it. It's an older one. It weighs about 14,000 pounds, but these things are diehard, tried and true. They're loud, yes. They're heavy, yes. But they've got pretty decent power, and they're very easy to, to rebuild and get serviced if you ever have a problem with them. This one's working great, and it's going on the truck, so it can be sold. Now, I've also got something else from old Joe. This is a three-quarter drive Chicago pneumatic CP, I believe it's a 772 model. And this guy um, originally, I'm trying to think, I don't think it had a problem originally. Joe gave it to me and asked me just to give it a once-over, give it a service, because he never had it apart. He bought this 25 years ago, used it a pawn shop. And I said, yeah, I'd love to, to take a look at this thing because I've never seen one before. Well, I took it apart and what I found was a broken piece. Now, I don't know how or when the piece broke. It was the spindle on the end of this anvil assembly. This anvil goes down into the body here and there's a spline drive on it and a spindle on the end and that spindle was broken. So as I took this thing apart, uh, I, I noticed that and I didn't know if that would cause any problems. I didn't know if it broke when I was taking it apart or if it broke before Joe gave it to me. I couldn't tell you, but I knew I had it broken in my hand. So I did a video uh, mentioning this and I got an email from a manager at Chicago Pneumatic and he said, hey, let me know if I can help. I said, as a matter of fact, uh, you can. Do you have a parts and price list so that I can order a new anvil from me. And he goes, yeah, I'll send you one. And he sent me one, and that one, I thought was gonna be a parts list, that well, it wasn't, it was a new anvil. So Chicago Nomadic actually supplied a new anvil for this, so thank you. It was a great gesture on their part. I reinstalled it, and, uh, and this thing's 
seems to be back up and running just fine. And I, uh, I, don't know, I had a heck of a time looking at this because it's such a different design from any other impact I've ever seen. Honestly, I can't tell you how it works because I, after staring at the mechanism, it's kind of a mystery how it impacts. I'm convinced that there's some forces at play once air is supplied to the unit that that don't that the mechanics of which are not known <laughs> just by looking at it. It's, it's tough to describe, but the way these parts nest together and how the mechanism appears to work is very strange to me. And I wasn't sure after I reassembled that I got it right. But I mean, how many ways are there to reassemble something? The parts can only go in one place. So I put it together and I tested it and it worked and I was really kind of surprised because I couldn't tell by looking upon reassembly if it would work or not, but it works. So they knew what they were doing when they designed it. It's just a, a, a very different mechanism in there than I was ever used to seeing. And this thing is extremely heavy, but Joe still uses it on a regular basis. So he, uh, it'll be good to go with this again. Last but not least, I had a customer request from me to provide him with a brake drum dolly for the shop that he works at. He works for a large sanitation company and he said it'll be a shop purchase. I said, do you have a part number of the one you'd like? He said, yes, the OTC 5017A, please. And here's a picture of it because it's too big to show you in the video. So this thing just showed up. It'll be delivered this week and ready to go for them. I'm very grateful for the business that I get from him and his shop because the shop buys disposable nitrile gloves from me. They have a purchase order in for a jet drill press, um, some other shop equipment, and the individual mechanics there are very good customers. And I, I love dealing with those, with those guys a lot. Going to that shop requires a big investment in time. I'm there for about two hours when I go, and it's worth every minute. Not only are the guys great to talk to, they're fun, they're funny, they're very insightful. They have a lot of great information about things and I have a really fun exchange with them, but they give me a ton of business. I'm very grateful for the business that the shop gives me. And I'm, I'm I don't know, I beside myself with how good business is there with those guys. So I make sure that no matter what, I see them every week and there have been times when they've asked me, hey man, can you swing by? Can you deliver this? Can you, you know, give us some more gloves or whatever? And I will carve out the time that I need to do that because uh, they are one of those customers who you will drop everything for and do whatever they ask because they're just that good to work with. I've got a great relationship with their lady in accounting and getting paid from them happens instantly because they just give me a, a shop card to keep on file. And I, I don't know, it's just one of those, it's one, I, I, I sound like I'm gushing about them. Well, I guess I am because it's a dream situation. And one weird thing about them is that when I go there every week, as you know, if you spend any time on a tool truck, the conversation turns to other tool trucks and other tool guys. And I think it's funny how a lot of these guys have such a dislike for their other tool trucks. And I don't understand how you could possibly mess up something that good, but I'm happy that they did because it means I don't have any competition at the best shop I could I could possibly hope to service. Between those guys and Capital Metro, which has some of the best guys I've ever known, and now I'm getting business from that shop, in addition to the dozens and dozens of mechanics that they have there, these guys treat me so well. Between these two shops and all the all the mechanics and technicians who work there, I am very grateful for your for for just knowing you and all your business that you've given me over the years and how we continue to do business. This means everything. So thanks guys. You really are the best. And I, uh, uh it's not to take, that's not to take anything away from anybody else, but, um, these guys are just the best and I love, love dealing with them, love doing business with them, love seeing them every week. So I'll be seeing you this week with all this stuff that I've got to deliver to you and more. So if you've enjoyed the video, please keep watching the channel because we've got so many more things coming down the line. We're gonna do air tool repair videos. You've seen my soap making video. If you haven't, go back and check that out because it's a different video, but it gives you some insight into how different lines of the business are shaping up 
and what's on the horizon. So we're going to get more soap sales, more glove sales. I'll give you updates on that whole side of the business at, as that continues to grow. And of course, our regular tools in the hall segments. So do me a favor, click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool. Don't be one.